Well, good morning, and thank you all so much for allowing me to join you here today, uh, not only because of this important conference, but also it's just such a pleasure to get outside of Washington, D.C. and visit the winter wonderland that is Oslo, Norway. So uh, I've really appreciated my time so far. I, I was invited here today to share with you a U.S. perspective on the clean energy transition. As many of you know, the clean energy transition, as we just talked about, is one of the most important, most consequential transitions of our time. By building a new clean energy economy, we can set the foundation for a more resilient and a more equitable world. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing to do, build a clean energy economy in the United States and working with partners and allies around the world to do the same, and then talk about a few ways I think Norway and the United States can work more closely together. Under President Biden's leadership, the United States is pursuing a modern industrial and innovation strategy, both at home and with partners around the world. It's a strategy that invests in the sources of our own economic and technological strength, promotes diversified and resilient global supply chains, sets high standards for everything from labor to the environment to trusted technology and good governance, and deploys capital to deliver on public goods like climate and health. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest investment in clean energy and climate action ever, the bipartisan infrastructure law, and other executive actions, the United States is in a strong position to achieve our one and a half degree aligned emissions target under the Paris Climate Agreement. President Biden's ambitious climate agenda has also unleashed a clean, manu clean manufacturing boom, stimulating over $124 billion in announced private investment in clean energy manufacturing and creating over 210,000 clean energy jobs in just one year with an additional one and a half million jobs projected to be created over the next decade. Through robust incentives, the United States will not only accelerate our clean energy transition, but also catalyze investment in other countries and drop the cost for clean energy for everyone, saving hundreds of billions of dollars globally. For example, over the next seven years, according to the analysis from our uh, US Department of Energy, twice as much U.S. wind, solar, and battery deployment is expected than we would have seen over the next seven years without the Inflation Reduction Act. However, these investments and policies are only truly successful if they catalyze action by our partners and allies elsewhere. As my boss, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, said in a speech late, early last year, we will unap unapologetically pursue our industrial strategy at home, but we are unambiguously committed to not leaving our friends behind. We want them to join us. In fact, we need them to join us. Creating a secure and sustainable economy in the face of the economic and geopolitical realities will require all of our allies and partners to do more, and there's no time to lose. For industries like, uh, excuse me, for industries like clean energy, we're nowhere near the global saturation point of investment needed or pu for uh, public or private sector. Ultimately, our goal is strong, resilient, and leading-edge techno-industrial base that the United States and like-minded partners, can estab established and economies alike, can invest in and rely upon together. Rest assured, we are working every day to ensure that the Inflation Reduction Act and the bipartisan infrastructure law investments result in good quality jobs, emissions reductions, and economic opportunity throughout the country and in every part of the country, regardless of political preferences. We're also working to leverage the momentum and example of the Inflation Reduction Act to build clean energy supply chains and climate action in other countries. Starting late last spring, we embarked on an aggressive series of partnerships with countries across the European Union, with Canada, with Japan, with UK, with Australia, with India, and most recently through the G7, the G20, and COP28 to ensure bold public investments in our respective industrial capacity are at the heart of the clean energy transition. Most recently at COP28, we launched the Clean Energy Supply Chain Collaborative to help expand clean energy supply chain investments across countries developed and developing to put in place aggressive clean energy supply chain deployment and diversification goals that we can meet in the next coming year. Norway is, of course, already an important and natural partner to the United States in all of our clean energy efforts as well. As one of the leading countries in offshore wind, carbon capture and sequestration, clean hydrogen, electric vehicles, battery technologies, critical minerals, green aluminum, and more, Norway and Norwegian companies are not only benefiting from U.S. policies and investments doing and also doing remarkable work here in the United States as well, but our, our partners and allies of ours around the world. 
As I'm meeting with companies on this trip, I'm pleased to learn of how many U.S.-Norwegian industrial partnerships exist, and I'm even more pleased to learn how many are, uh, are being considered uh, anew. It is an exciting time for both our countries, but of course more must be done. Just a few weeks, short weeks ago, the world concluded the first ever, ever global stock take to assess our progress towards global climate targets. It confirmed that while we've made important progress, we are collectively behind in reaching almost all of our global climate goals. This realization led many of us to adopt new targets to do things like triple renewable energy capacity, double energy intensity targets, and triple nuclear energy capacity. It is incumbent upon all of us, industry and government alike, to make sure we pursue these goals with renewed vigor and in ways that create exciting new industries. Here are a few challenges that I think we can work on together. First, we need to ensure that investment is happening in places where it's needed most. According to institutions like the International Energy Agency, clean energy investment continues to outpace fossil energy investment year over year. For every one US dollar spent on fossil fuels, 1.7 US dollars is now being spent on clean energy. Five years ago, that ratio was one to one. But at the same time, clean energy investment in emerging and developing economies after declining in 2020 has struggled to keep pace. By the end of the 2020s, annual capital spending in clean energy in these economies needs to expand by more than seven times to above $1 trillion a year in order to put the world on track to reach net zero emissions by 2050. We need to scale investment in developing economies as quickly as possible, and I think the United States and Norway can work to do that. Secondly, we must address the near-term threats to energy security as we build a more resilient future. As we stand here today, the clean energy transition is taking place against the backdrop of a near, nearly two-year anniversary of Russia's invasion in Ukraine and the terrible energy security crisis it brought about. I want to thank Norway for its steadfast support of European energy security throughout this time period. And with each passing day, we in government and industry must work hard together to ensure that this crisis allows us to punctuate a decisive shift to a more secure form of energy for Ukraine, for Europe, and for the world. Finally, we need to ensure that our clean energy transition creates a more secure energy future going forward, one where energy supply chains are clean, resilient, and diverse. According to the International Energy Agency, nearly $1.3 trillion in clean energy mining, manufacturing, and investment is needed between now and 2030 to meet our 2050 climate targets. Despite the surge in investment that's taken place over the last year and a half, we are still very behind when it comes to scaling our capacity and increasing diversification, and we want to work with all of you to close that gap. Today, we re still rely on too few countries for critical minerals, materials, and equipment. That reliance and failure to build new capacity more quickly is leading to cost pressures and supply chain vulnerabilities that threaten our ability to transition quickly. We must continue to work together to overcome these headwinds together, and I look forward to the process for doing that. Thank you.